Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton began upstaging Dr. Kissinger the moment they got up when they tried to drive away in his bulletproof Cadillac. While they had been celebrating their re-engagement just downstairs from Dr. Kissinger, he was busy sorting out disengagement, though they planned to meet for a drink. When they arrived at the Wailing Wall, the entire Kissinger press corps was waiting. It obviously made a change from the rigid doorstep briefings, but it was difficult to believe that this was the most sacred shrine of Judaism. Elizabeth Taylor is a Jewess. Richard Burton said some distant Polish relative of his had been a Jew. He donned a skull cap and spent a couple of minutes at the wall. In the ladies' section, there was a free-for-all, as worshippers and photographers fought for a view of Miss Taylor at prayer. She said later she'd been almost knocked flat on her face, and so gave up. Back at Dr. Kissinger's headquarters, it was nightmare for his security men, as Miss Taylor and Mr. Burton convened a presidential-style press conference. No one was to ask about their private lives, but why were they together in Israel? Uh, we are together, and uh, it seemed quite natural, since I've been wanting to come in so long, he was coming here on business, that uh, we combine business and pleasure. Please, no more questions in this line. When would they talk about their private lives? Well, um... Don't have fun. Nikki. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, you, you write the questions and I write the, the answers and you can read them when I'm dead. So the sneaks were left to go back to Kissinger watching while Mr. Burton and Miss Taylor asked to be left to their new lives as the modern Darby and Joan. Keith Hatfield, News at 10 in Jerusalem.